An amazing archaeological discovery can happen anywhere at any time. You don't even necessarily need the assistance of an archaeologist to make an amazing discovery. All you need to do is pay attention to the world around you. If you do, your discoveries might one day appear on our channel. In the meantime, here's another collection of truly magnificent archaeological discoveries and the fantastic tales that come with them. In June 2018, Swiss construction workers were in the middle of creating an underground parking garage in the canton of Valais when they came across an enormous standing stone. They could have demolished it, but something persuaded them to stop work and take a closer look. It's a good job that they did. What they'd stumbled across was actually a 5,000-year-old megalithic tomb known as a dolmen. On reflection, perhaps they shouldn't have been surprised. The land they were working on isn't far from the Don Bosco Celtic burial grounds in Sion. It now seems likely that those burial grounds extend a lot further than archaeologists once thought they did. The dolmen eventually turned out to be home to the remains of hundreds of people, making this one of the largest prehistoric burial sites in all of Switzerland. Sadly, none of the standing stones bear any inscriptions. That means we're unlikely ever to find out the identities of any of the people buried here. But this was clearly a very significant site for whoever did the burying. Archaeologists have been on the hunt for more dolmens between here and the Don Bosco site ever since. Leonardo da Vinci's masterpiece La Gioconda, better known as the Mona Lisa, is the most famous painting in the world. Art experts and historians have argued for centuries about the identity of the woman in the painting, but the mystery might have been solved in 2012 with the excavation of a 16th century grave in Florence, Italy. This skeleton is believed to belong to Lisa Gherardini, who many scholars believe to have been da Vinci's muse. Her remains were found beneath a convent where she's thought to have spent the final two years of her life after the death of her husband, before passing away in 1542. Tests performed on the bones suggest that this person may well have passed away that year. Unfortunately, the skeleton isn't well preserved. It was one of seven stacked atop each other. And while archaeologists hope to be able to retrieve the skull and perform a facial reconstruction, there isn't enough of it left to allow that to happen. There was also too little DNA left for a comparison to Gerardini's living descendants. This is a skeleton of the right age, buried in the right place, but is it her? Perhaps we'll never know for sure. Ancient Roman villas aren't exactly hard to come by in Italy, but few are more stunning than the villa of the Papyri. Named for its enormous collection of paper scrolls, the villa is thought to have been the largest and most luxurious in all of Herculaneum prior to the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in the year 79. The eruption was a disaster for the city, but the lava flows and ash turned out to be the perfect preservative. When archaeologists eventually rediscovered the Villa of the Papyri in 1750 by digging tunnels through almost 100 feet of volcanic material, they found that its incredible frescoes, marble sculptures, and bronzes were almost entirely undamaged. Even the 1,800 or so papyrus scrolls are still present and correct, albeit carbonized by the intense heat of the disaster. Only a senior member of the Roman elite could have lived here, which has prompted speculation that this may once have been the home of Lucius Calpurnius Piso Caesonius. He was Julius Caesar's father-in-law. Even now, so many years after its discovery, much of the villa is still buried. Excavation work is slow and difficult, and is expected to continue well into the next century. Road workers make archaeological discoveries quite regularly, and sometimes the discoveries they make are significant. Here's one from March 2021 in the Eskisehir province of Turkey. There, an ancient sarcophagus was disturbed during routine road works. To their immense surprise, the workers found that they'd actually broken into a tomb containing Roman-era tear bottles and a range of other historical artifacts and burial goods. The marble sarcophagus, which is engraved with mysterious symbols, is believed to be around 1,800 years old. 
Rather than following the usual process of summoning archaeologists to the scene, the road workers called the police. The police then arrived and retrieved the sarcophagus before handing it over to officials from Eskisahir Museum. Archaeologists there were understood to be furious that the site had been disturbed in such a manner without them being notified, and understandably so. The style of the marble sarcophagus is unusual for the Roman era, and the lack of a written inscription is also unusual. One theory is that this was effectively a do-it-yourself burial, carried out by an illiterate and relatively poor family. But that doesn't tally with the sarcophagus being made from marble. It's a mysterious find. Shards of pottery are among the most common discoveries made by archaeologists. But all of that pottery has to come from somewhere. During the Roman era in Poland, it came from this production center close to the village of Rzepia. The ancient factory was found in March 2021. There are 130 furnaces at the site, which makes it not only the largest pottery production center of its kind in Poland, but one of the largest in all of Europe. Experts say it was at the peak of its productivity around 1,500 years ago. Two of the furnaces have been fully excavated, with the remainder identified through a magnetometer study of the surrounding area. Rather than being owned and operated by the Romans themselves, it's highly likely that it was built and used by the region's Germanic tribes. Of the tribes who are known to have been in the area at the time, the Vandals are the best candidates. The specific kind of pottery that was made here was large storage vessels, characterized by their thick spouts. Experts don't yet know what was stored inside them, but they could have been used for a variety of purposes. What can a single coin tell us about the disappearance of a legendary pirate? Well, let's check out the coin and find out! History tells us that in 1695, the notorious English pirate Captain Henry Every posed as a slave trader to attack a ship full of Muslim pilgrims and then sailed off into the sunset, never to be seen or heard of again. In early 2021, archaeologist Jim Bailey found a rare 17th century Arabian coin in a meadow in Middletown, New Jersey, USA. Jim believes there's a connection between his coin and Henry Every. Although nobody knows for sure what happened to the pirate, the most common theory is that he first escaped to the Bahamas and then moved on to Ireland in 1696, after King William III of England put a bounty on his head. However, this coin is consistent with the type that Every would have plundered from the ship he attacked, and there are very few ways it could have found its way to America. Instead of heading to Ireland, Every could have kept up his pretense of being a slave trader and landed in North Carolina, with his famous ship, the Fancy, renamed to Seaflower. Perhaps he retired here on his ill-gotten gains, leaving only this coin behind as evidence. Having looked at a massive pottery production center in Poland a few moments ago, here's a colossal salt works on the North Sea coast of England. Radiocarbon dating has been carried out on this carefully carved out structure, revealing that it was used almost 6,000 years ago. That means it belongs to the early Neolithic period and shows surprising signs of sophistication for a facility created during that era. Salt production facilities of this size have been found elsewhere in Europe before, most commonly in Germany and France. This Yorkshire site is the first of its kind to be found in the United Kingdom. While there are other ancient salt works on British soil, the oldest of them prior to this discovery only dates back as far as the Bronze Age. What marks the site out as a salt works is the presence of a brine storage pit, flint and stone tool sets, and three hearths. There are also several hundred shards of Neolithic pottery at the site, many of which are covered in salt. This facility belongs to a time when the ancient residents of Britain were transitioning from nomadic hunter-gatherers to settled farmers, developing their first inklings of agriculture. A steady supply of salt would have been essential to that process. The Colosseum of Rome is a very large, very famous building. You'd like to think that if anything of a similar shape and size existed elsewhere on Earth, 
archaeologists would have found it already. Remarkably, one such building managed to escape everybody's attention until early 2021. During a scheduled archaeological survey of Mastura in Turkey, a research team came across a full-size replica of the Colosseum half buried under a mound of earth in the forest, hidden by foliage. It doesn't look as impressive as the iconic building it's based on, but there's no mistaking the shape of it. It's a large amphitheater in the shape of a circle and appears to have been built in the exact same style. Back at the time it was built, Anatolia was part of the Roman Empire. Other grand Roman buildings like this are once thought to have stood in the area, but most were destroyed long ago. This Colosseum has been protected by the trees, bushes, and mud that have kept it hidden for so long. Back in its second century heyday, it would have hosted around 20,000 people gathered together to watch battles between man and beast, man and animal, and animal versus animal. Speaking of long-lost Roman buildings turning up a long way from Rome, here's a whole villa that was found in Spain in March 2021. The building dates back to the first century and was unearthed in the town of Rus. While the villa itself is little more than a ruin, there's a large, beautiful mosaic inside it that's been remarkably well preserved under centuries of mud and dirt. Archaeologists aren't totally sure if the mosaic belongs to the original first century villa or whether it was a later addition. It's known that there was a villa here between the 1st and 5th centuries, but the original building was largely destroyed and rebuilt during the 4th century. A pottery oven and an olive oil mill have also been found at the same site, along with what might have been a family tomb. The mayor of Rus has acted quickly to have the site declared an asset of cultural interest, which affords it protection from redevelopment. Archaeologists are still working at the site, in the hope that there's more to be found. October 2020 was an important month for archaeologists in Scotland. After two solid years of work in and around the River Teviot, they've found the remains of a medieval bridge. The experts are so excited by the discovery that they've labeled it as one of the most important medieval structures ever to be found in the country. Radiocarbon dating of some of the wooden remains of the bridge has allowed the team to date it to the mid-14th century. Ancient kings and queens would have traveled across this bridge during medieval times because it would have formed part of the Via Regia, also known as the King's Way. James V would have had to have crossed it during his travels in 1526, as would Mary Queen of Scots as she returned home from her tour of the borders in 1566. The strategic importance of the bridge can't be overstated. During times of high water, it would have been the only place to safely cross the Teviot between Berwick and Hawick, which would have made it an important strategic target during times of war. What's the real story behind the enormous footprints that were found an astonishing two and a half miles below the surface of the Pacific Ocean between Hawaii and Mexico in mid-2018? Scientists don't know, but something must have made them and there's very little chance that the something in question was any kind of natural phenomenon. The footprints were found by a diving robot and have an average depth of one foot. Each of them is no smaller than six feet in length. Conspiracy theorists have already suggested that they were made by giants in ancient times, but we all know how unlikely that explanation is. There have never been any mining or scientific expeditions at this depth in this location, so experts are at a loss as to what might have created the dents. There are more than 3,500 of them in a line, following a similar pattern to a two-legged creature walking along a curve. The best guess that scientists have come up with so far is sperm whales diving to the ocean floor to shed loose or dead skin by rubbing themselves against it. But this practice has never been directly observed in the wild. Further study will be required before we have any good answers to this riddle. Human beings have been keeping cats and dogs as household pets for thousands of years. Our ancient ancestors got just as emotionally attached to their pets as we do today. We know that because of the elaborate burials they afforded to them when they passed away. 
an enormous pet cemetery was discovered in the old Roman port of Berenice in Egypt at the end of February 2021, and archaeologists say it's the largest and oldest of its kind ever to be found. They believe the first pet laid to rest here passed away around 2,000 years ago. The remains of more than 600 cats and dogs have been identified at the site so far, with more waiting to be discovered. Most of the animals are buried in pits, covered over with either ceramics or textiles to form a basic sarcophagus. There are also a few macaques and baboons to go with all the cats and dogs. The cats wore collars of a similar style to those that are used today, albeit made from glass and shells rather than fabric. Some of the animals were so old by the time they passed away that they had no teeth and so would have had to have been fed soft food by hand. It seems that some aspects of human behavior never change. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.